Hello, in the 14th video in my uh, series called Fourier series, we're going to look at Fizier's theorem. And Fizier's theorem is this. So let's let f be continuous and have period 2 pi. And let this be the, the nth partial sum of the Fourier series for f. That generated by f. And we're going to let cn be the Cassara sum of these partial sums. And we want to show that this sequence converges uniformly to f. Now notice that you know this one says that 0, so it's just this term. S1 means it's this term plus you know one of each of those, and you know, and so forth. And there's n n plus one of them terms, so we divide by uh, n plus one. And so let's let's jump right in. And so the partial sum can be written like this, and that's from video F7 and uh, with a small U substitution plugged in for one of the formulas, and I pointed out in the video F7. So this, the partial sum can be written like this. So that means, now note that this sum is in here. So if we look at CN, with this plugged in, we get this. So notice that if we plug this in for each one of those, the integral in this is common in every one of them. So we can kind of factor it out. You know, there's a pi common. But then it goes from 0 to n. So those are separate, and that's divided by n plus 1. And we're in the t world. So, so this uh, Cassar sum can be written like this. Now, by F8, where we looked at the Fazir kernel, that's what, that's what it, we represented as Kn of t. So that's this Kassar sum of the Drishlik um, kernels. And we showed that in F8. Now, also by F8, we showed that the integral of the uh, Fazir kernel is 1. So F, f of x, so here, if we look at this integral, we're in the t world, so we can factor that out front, and then we showed that what's left uh, integrates to 1. So really, we're multiplying f of x times 1, but we're doing it in a way that we can combine cn and f of x, right? They look very similar, and that's what we do in the next step. So we take cn and minus f of x, and since we're integrating over the same range, you know, we just take the difference. And there's a, the uh, Fajir kernel is common in both, and we're in the T world. Now, um, to show this converges uniformly, what, it, what we need to show is that as n goes to infinity, that this difference gets really, really small independent of the x's, which means that this integral gets really, really small independent of x's, okay? That's what we need to show. But to show it, um, we're going to break this up into three integrals. We're, integ we're going to integrate from minus pi to minus delta, minus delta to delta, and then delta to pi. So we're going to split this difference into three integrals. And we're going to show that we can make each of those three integrals arbitrarily small, independent of x, which then shows that this converges uniformly. Okay, so here, here are, here's the difference, and here's the three intervals on the ranges that we want. Okay, um, and so let's do this. So delta is between 0 and pi, and we need to show that each of the integrals can be made arbitrarily small, independent of x, by making n large enough. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to look at this integral, integral and show that it can be made arbitrarily small, independent of x. And then we're going to note that this one is actually, you pretty much do the same thing to make it arbitrarily small independent of x. So we'll just say, you know, based on what we did here, you can do the same thing. And then we're going to look at this one separately. Okay. So first, let's look at this piece. Um, by 
F8 Part C, and this is the Fazir kernel video. Okay, we get this inequality, and so so this is the difference. You know, this is the integral that we want to look at, and it says that the Fazir kernel, we can pick a number that's bigger than that, independent of t. So essentially, we take this delta and plug it into this quantity here. This quantity is always bigger than this Fizier kernel. So if we plug in this quantity here, it becomes independent of T and we can take it out front and that's what we get right here. So you look at uh, F8 part C to, and we prove that. Now F of X is continuous by assumption on this inter interval which means that it's bounded by some number m. Okay, so if we look at the absolute value of the, the these differences, that's going to be less than or equal to the absolute value plus the absolute value. And if each of those are bounded by m, the whole thing's bounded by 2m. And so so then thus, and we're going to call this uh, one star. And so this is our original integral up here and uh, this piece was bounded by down here so this pi comes over so that bounded by this and this piece when we stick in its upper bound of 2m um, it this this is bigger than that now if 2m is bigger than this surely if we multiply it by something even bigger say pi 2m we're going to even be bigger so this is definitely bigger than this now um, notice that everything is constant here. We picked a delta. Constant, 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 constant. So the only thing that's not is n. So as n goes to infinity, this gets really small. And at some point, we can pick n, n, one, n is sufficiently large, this gets really close to zero, or definitely less than epsilon over three. And so this integral is less than epsilon over three for sufficiently large n. Now, very similarly, we can make 2 star, which is one of the other integrals, less than epsilon over 3 also. So here we went from delta to pi, minus pi to minus delta. So very similar argument, we could say that it's less than epsilon over 3 for sufficiently large n, right? Because these are all constants, so this go, as n grows, this gets smaller. And then at some, at some point, it's less than epsilon over 3. So now we need the, to deal with the last interval. So we need to bound this interval for between minus delta and delta. Um, well, f is continuous on uh, minus pi to pi, which means it's uniformly continuous on minus pi to pi. And the definition of uniformly continuous, it means yeah, for a given epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that the function difference is less than some small number, say epsilon over three, for every x and y in this interval if the difference of those is less than delta. Okay, So there exists a delta that makes this happen for any given epsilon. Okay. But in our function, we have this. So, so this equivalent is saying that the t is less than delta, right? Because then it makes the, the, the difference of x and x minus t less than delta. Okay. So when t is less than delta, this is less than epsilon over 3. That's, that's because it's uniformly continuous. So um, 3 star, that's, this is the third integral, we, is this, but since this is uniformly continuous, if we put its upper bound in here, then the inter then this is less than it, that. So we put the upper bound of epsilon over three in, and this is the case. But now this integral right here by F8, this is one. Now notice this absolute value, the Fizier kernel is always positive, so we don't need the, ab the absolute value. So this is one which says it's, it's less than or equal to epsilon over three. And this is uh, for all n, 
is it's the case. Um, so now the steps that we need to take to make this happen is this. We're going to choose a delta. We need to choose a delta that makes this true. So uh, we're given epsilon, then we're going to choose a delta that makes this integral really small. Now once we have delta and epsilon, we can pick an end that of course will depend upon delta and epsilon that make the one star and two star integrals really 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 small say less than epsilon over three okay so thus any n bigger than this n that we picked here we get the following so the absolute value of this difference is less than or equal to this so the absolute value you know is equal to the absolute value of this but if you take the absolute value in then this gets a little bit bigger and that's what that's saying and the Fizier kernel is always positive so you don't need absolute value signs around it now if we break this into three pieces we get this now the way we broke it the, the delta is chosen such that it makes this really small and then once we know epsilon and delta then we pick an end that makes those really, really small. Or the mm, these two really, really small. Okay. So, so that means this, this, and this is less than epsilon over 3, epsilon over 3, epsilon over 3, which is equal to epsilon. And we've done this, and they're independent of x in this interval. Okay. And that's the definition of of uniform con uh, convergence. So uh, pick an n greater than zero and and it, we can make it arbitrarily small so thus this Cassara sum converges uniformly to f of x in this interval. And we're done. Well that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.